Greetings, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Today, we will listen to the sermon of Archbishop Vigano. As Archbishop Vigano found solace in the quiet of his church, burdened by the cares of his congregation and the world, he bowed his head in prayer. Lord, he whispered, grant me guidance and clarity in these troubled times. Show me how to best serve your people and spread your message of peace and love. As he spoke these words, Archbishop Vigano sensed a presence unlike any he had ever felt. It was as if the very air crackled with an otherworldly energy, filling the sacred space with anticipation. Suddenly, a brilliant light surrounded him, and he knew he was in the presence of the Divine. In that moment, Jesus revealed to Archbishop Vigano a shocking vision, one that would forever change his life and ministry. With eyes wide with wonder and awe, Archbishop Vigano saw scenes of impending conflict and devastation, revelations of geopolitical turmoil that shook him to his core. Urgently, Archbishop Vigano implored those gathered to heed this message and share it with their fellow Christians. On April 8, he recounted, an extraordinary event unfolded before me. As I sat in my living room, darkness enveloped my surroundings, transporting me to an unfamiliar realm filled with fear. There, I witnessed three figures resembling high-ranking government officials gathered around a table, discussing military strategies and preparations for conflict. The gravity of the situation overwhelmed me, and I felt powerless to discern the extent of American involvement. As Christians, we must understand the severity of this crisis and unite in prayer for divine guidance and peace amidst these tumultuous times. Amidst the dimly illuminated chamber, surrounded by the dignitaries of state, Archbishop Vigano's focus was drawn to scattered documents and maps. One document, emblazoned with the seal of the United States government, unveiled intricate details of states entangled in forthcoming preparations. With a held breath, Archbishop meticulously examined its contents, uncovering New York, California, and Washington as pivotal points of the impending strife. The gravity of this realization struck me deeply, he mourned. These states, pillars of our nation, stand precariously on the brink of ruin. As the vision unfolded further, Archbishop Vigano found himself transported to another tableau, a desolate battlefield scarred by the horrors of conflict. The air resounded with the thunderous echoes of artillery and the sporadic bursts of gunfire. Amidst the chaos, a formidable and meticulously organized military force from the Middle East loomed in the distance. Although the exact identity of the nation remained veiled, the insights gleaned sent a shiver down his spine. This nation's reputation for precise and lethal strikes against others, Archbishop divulged, left me profoundly unsettled. Their military might was evident, boasting advanced weaponry and sophisticated tactics that instilled fear in their adversaries. Launching a full-scale assault on the American states he had earlier identified, Archbishop Vigano witnessed their relentless onslaught, leaving widespread devastation in its wake. Entire cities lay in ruins, and American forces struggled to stem the tide of aggression. The scenes of destruction and chaos weighed heavily on Archbishop, with innocent civilians bearing the brunt of the conflict. It was an epic battle, he concluded, with New York, California, and Washington facing a formidable enemy. The devastating war brought unimaginable effects to the American nation, touching every aspect of life in a nightmarish way. The economic impact was catastrophic, Archbishop described, disrupting the financial stability of the economic powerhouses. Businesses shuttered, factories were destroyed, and stock markets plummeted. Unemployment soared, poverty rates skyrocketed, and inflation made necessities unaffordable for many. The social fabric of these states was torn apart, with families losing loved ones and communities shattered. Homelessness became rampant, and access to food and clean water became scarce, leading to widespread suffering. Refugee camps sprung up across the nation as people fled the war zones in search of safety. While the war exacted a heavy toll on both the physical and mental health of the populace, 
the devastation wrought upon the population and the indelible trauma inflicted on the people were beyond measure. The war had etched scars that would take years, if not decades, to heal. Amid the harrowing vision, a moment of revelation pierced through, sending shock waves through my being. It was as if a veil had been lifted, granting insight into the root cause of the conflict that had engulfed the American states of New York, California, and Washington. In the midst of this disconcerting vision, a sudden shift transported me to an entirely different scene. Here, I witnessed a group of people bearing the unmistakable features of the Middle East, huddled together in distress, bound and gagged with ropes adorned with the colors of the American flag. They were unmistakably hostages, their eyes betraying fear and despair as they whispered prayers and sought solace in each other's presence. The exact reasons for their captivity remained shrouded in secrecy, but it became evident that their plight was the catalyst for the war. The Middle Eastern nation, known for its deadly precision, in response to perceived injustices, had launched a fierce assault in a bid to secure their compatriots' release. The consequences were dire, escalating the conflict to unprecedented levels of destruction and suffering. As I grappled with the revelations, a presence ethereal and otherworldly enveloped me, conveying an urgent warning. The events witnessed were not mere visions of the future but on the brink of unfolding in reality. To prevent the looming catastrophe from unfolding, Archbishop recognized the urgent need for collective prayer. He emphasized the imperative nature of this unified spiritual effort, appealing to individuals from diverse backgrounds and life paths to join hands in beseeching God for divine intervention, peace, and the safeguarding of nations. As Archbishop emerged from the profound experience weakened and trembling from the weight of the revelation, he found solace in the gradual return of strength. It was a moment of profound clarity, a call to action fueled by a deep sense of responsibility and urgency. In light of the gravity of the situation and the urgency of the message, Archbishop fervently urged those within earshot to disseminate the revelation far and wide. He understood the power of collective prayer, recognizing that as more individuals joined in this spiritual endeavor, the strength of their supplications would magnify, creating a formidable force against the impending calamity. With a heart brimming with gratitude for their attention and cooperation, Archbishop extended his blessings to all who heeded his call. He prayed earnestly that God's grace and protection would encompass them as they embarked on this journey of prayer and vigilance, trusting in the Almighty's mercy and providence to guide them through the tumultuous time ahead.